it's actually it's it's incredible the amount of strength that Iran has shown despite everything, you know, yeah. and, and they're still they're viewed as the terrorists, you know, right, right, the, right. They, they Israel, Israel can, yeah, do anything. Assassination. <laughs> they've they've suffered many assassinations over the the, the course of the years, you know, at the hands mm. of Israel and ec severe economic sanctions that led to the deaths of many Iranians. Um, you know, a, a long war, again, that led to the death, caused the death of two million Iranians, a war in which we supported the other side, and when the other side used chemical weapons, right? But anyway, that's a, it's a right. long and sordid I mean, history. You know, they, they've suffered greatly, and it's actually it's shown remarkable restraint. Um, and you hear they're being pushed to the edge. You really got a feel for them. You say, well, yeah, I understand you don't want to have a war, but... But this has to end at some point. Right. Maybe you do have to have a war. As awful as it, it might be, as it well, right. I mean, be. I mean, apparently, apparently, killing tens of thousands of women and children in Gaza wasn't enough to provoke people. So we want to we bomb a, your embassy in in Beirut in Lebanon. They bomb the Iranian embassy. Then they they they, ass well, they mean, assassinate. I, mean, I, I think you mean in Damascus, right? The the. Oh, was that in the, in Syria? Yeah, the the, the Iranian Damascus, embassy attack back in April, right? Okay, my my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's so many. It, well, that just goes to show Israel's bombing so many countries right, and killing so many people it. in so many yeah, different no, places. That I lose track. Yeah, leaders. I, I lose track. Yeah. It's like right, right, or just like them bombing that port in, in Yemen. I almost completely forgot about it. That that was only right. two weeks ago. You can't keep up with it. Yeah, it's just or this with constant. A or and the hospitals that are bombed and right And now. then, right, the hospitals and schools and churches that are blown up and again and again and again. It's like, how, what will it take, you know, for there to be a response? And then there is a little response. And then Israel comes crying like, oh, my God, we're under attack from these terrorists. And uh -huh. then it's a very calculated, calibrated response where Hezbollah and Iran never target civilians. That's something I think people should be aware of. They right. call these people terrorists. I, do do you know how many rarely, civilians right. in Israel have been killed from from Iranian or Israeli activity or, or right. Iranian or Hezbollah Lebanese right. activity? Iranian, I think. Do you know probably, in the, yeah. since October seventh? Okay, well, Iranian, I would say zero. I think for Hezbollah, zero, right, zero from right, Iran, right. Hezbollah, a total of seven. And there's you know, there's been a lot of. I think that's clearly unintentional. They've been striking military bases, but inevitably, yeah, the, the, there are civ civilian casualties in a war, even when you're targeting military assets right um now mm. yeah there's you know there's been this constant ex exchange of fire and sometimes you know uh israel is saying we just can't put up with this anymore obviously we got to invade but it turns out that of uh the the if you look at the number of strikes going from Lebanon into Israel and vice versa. It turns out that eighty-three percent come from Israel into Lebanon. So it's only seventeen percent of the total, uh, you know, missile strikes and rocket strikes and 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 other um, kinds of uh, you know fire. Only seventeen percent of that right. is actually from the Hezbollah side. Well, and Hezbollah, like you said, they they're they're very careful in their targets. They pick military targets, right? Israel they, on the, is right. dumping white phosphorus on villages in South yeah. Lebanon. Yeah. You know, they, fact, they're they have a, chemical they, warfare. That, just... Right. Well, they, in fact, I mean, just as we're seeing, uh, the, we see the extreme example in Gaza, but they've long had a history of targeting, targeting civilian um, structures, you know, it's targeting civilians, period. Um, that, that's part of it. It's a military doctrine. I, I, right now, the, the name of it, the, it escapes me, but it's just a disproportionate attack. Is it gospel? On this... No, it's not gospel. No, it's, a, it's okay. an Arabic that... term, you know, right now. That it, it's, okay. It, but anyway, they, it's a matter of policy often. It's just like, okay, we'll just do a, okay, they're, to let them know who's in charge, we're just going to, you know, wipe out these villages or, uh, you know, maybe that'll, That'll teach them again who's in charge. That'll teach them to um, to show restraint, not to fire any more rockets. Because every time they fire a rocket, we'll take out a village. It's something actually like kind of similar to what the Nazis did in Greece. Um, if any, you know, it's actually well, yeah. If any Nazi the soldier was killed 
as a matter of policy, the Nazis would grab 10, 10 Greeks and just shoot them there, pull them out of a village mm. and shoot them. Yeah, the, the just I you know I I almost felt bad saying it last time, but it's just the more I look at it, it's just true. Like Israel is an evil, irredeemable state at this point. I just don't see any way for that you can kind of paint it in other way. There's no way to say like, oh, there's you know they have some reason, some rationality to it. There is nothing behind it right now. Yeah. Is that that fair to say? Do you, I think what, it's what is fair. your opinion? I mean, again, you, I would say it's a self-destructive path or down. It's irrational. You know, again, a, a, what what they were doing before October seventh was cruel. You know, it was it, you could even describe it as monstrous, but it was rational. It was careful, right? It was incremental, and they were winning. It was working. It was like the world had forgot about the Palestinian problem, and they were slowly chipping away at at, at, at the West Bank. You know, seizing another couple of acres every, every month or and driving off, you know, more people from the land that they they wanted. Um, and that could have gone on for a long, long time. And nobody would have said anything. Occasionally, there'll be the, the wringing of hands. But but by and large, it was forgotten. It's, it was, was not part of any, you know, of the... Um, it wasn't... It wasn't attracting anybody's attention. It wasn't part of the the you know the news stories that we see every night. Um, it was out of the news. It was out of people's consciousness, and they could have just continued that way. That would have been rational. It would have been very cruel, but it would it was rational what they were doing. Um, now, what they're doing now is not irrational. It's self-destructive. The world is turning against them. They're becoming an international pariah. And. And they, it, what? and they don't really, they've gone so far that there's, it's very hard to turn back. It's really hard for them to turn around or, you know, make a U-turn at this point. To, they've gone so far down this road that it's really, it looks like there's really no going back. Um, and we, we've talked about this early, like earlier, you take, commit half a genocide. That's, it's, at that point you stop what you're doing it's just like you've got all this blood on your hands you and it, the world sees it it's the, the i think the only way is just and, and and it becomes an admission too of what they've done you know they um you know people tell them stop 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 you finally stop but you've you know you've killed half the people in the room uh, their only hope is really actually to go through out the other side to 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 ignite a regional war and to win it and you win it, you know. Again, well, you're the victor. Victors get to to write the history. You know that that's maybe the only hope that they have. Do you think As, that they that people in Israeli actually think they could win this? Are they that well, delusional? Well, they know they can't win it on their own. That's why they want to bring in the U.S. I think Netanyahu on that level, he's pretty. You know, he's very crafty. He knows that he can't do it, but he just. Do they think that is, they can win with the U.S.? I, yeah, I believe they like can. This, well, I, I think, think they may have miscalculated, that... but it may have been just like Zelensky's miscalculation when Boris Johnson approached him and said, "Yeah, pull out, tear up this um, this Istanbul agreement. You know, we've got your back. We'll supply you with every weapon that you need. You'll beat the Russians." And he heard it. He believed. He did it right. And okay, it's a little somewhat of a different situation for Netanyahu, but he's thinking the same thing. He said, "Look." Okay, yeah, we're just a little country, but we got, we've got the um, the United States right behind. They're committed. They'll do anything we want them to do, and we'll I'll, I'll pull them yeah, into but... this, and then, and it'll be the U.S. versus Iran. And come on, Iran is just a, it's its economy is what like three percent of the U.S. and whatever. Um, I think that's the way. Like, like so he he may have miscalculated. I think he has, and, it's, and I think actually the U.S defense establishment understands this um, pretty well, which is why they've been trying not to get involved, is that they know that Iran can do a lot of damage to them, you know, especially they've got a lot of these bases that are very vulnerable to Iranian missiles. And Iran, you know, demonstrate that they can hit those bases with great precision. They did that after the, the assassination of Soleimani. But... Mm -hmm. But right. I think again, these politicians sometimes uh, they don't really, you know, they, they it's it's often the the politicians, it's the civilian leaders that are 
can be the greatest warmongers of all. They just don't seem to really, they don't know the nuts and bolts of, of uh, you know, actual military conflict. I just think it's like, you know, we're the, we're obviously like the most awesome force on earth and that's all I need to know. And I said, so let's go take these people out. And in Netanyahu's case as well, you know, there's, it's, well, we're, okay, we, we've got the U.S. and that they're the preeminent military power. And, and so what's to worry? We'll, we'll win. Well, I, I feel like the Ukraine-Russia war changed everything, though. And most of the world has woken up to it, but uh, the United States is slow to admit it, and maybe right. and NATO, well, Western Europe lot is. Of, but yeah, right. You get you know, of course, um, a lot of us are seeing that 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 these Western military systems aren't really what they were cracked up to be. They've actually one after another has been neutralized by by the Russians, and but. And I'm sure against the, the like the defense experts, the real military um, tech guys, they understand this. Uh, but a lot of these civilian leaders really live in a different universe, and the the, the counter -prop propaganda is pretty powerful. You step out of that, you know, you get into the the Western bubble, and it's it's only about Western strength. And there's just very you have to really make an effort to find any admission of weakness. Now it's coming out even in mainstream papers or in you know, mainstream media outlets. But if you're not a very careful consumer of the news, if you're not really digging for the truth and you're just you're kind of comfortable in that bubble, you'd still have the sense of supremacy. It's still there. And you'd be surprised how many of these leaders, you would think they would know better, but sometimes they, they're, you know, again, maybe like we were saying earlier, victims of their own propaganda. Yeah, but, uh, maybe, but... It's you just take don't even have to go into the weeds with the Ukraine Russia war. Just take a look like, OK, is Ukraine winning? How are they doing? How is it right. working out with the U.S. backing you and we got your back? What well, you don't have to yeah, even go no, into the, the, the nitty gritty of the logistics right. of the munitions. Like right. what? We can only produce 550 <laughs> Patriot missiles a year. And yeah, well, you have to shoot well, a lot of that, for every missile. A lot of that missile. does not it's make like, it into the mainstream. If you just watch CNN or whatever, you you probably would never know that. Right, you but really you, if you're if you're Netanyahu, you're talking to the, the your military leaders at like this. You hope so. He's got to realize right. to some extent, yeah. right? But yeah. Um, well, well but if the, you said I mean, that, Netanyahu. Yeah, but the fact is, he just thinks he that clearly this, wants war. And that means that he does believe he can win it. If he thought he was going to be defeated, he wouldn't do it. But he believes he's going to win it. He's just, he, I, I think, you know, maybe he's probably hearing some things from his uh, IDF guys and maybe from some Pentagon officials. And he brushes it off. All oh, these guys, they're always just so damn cautious. You know, they just don't want to muddy their, their shiny new equipment, you know. Uh, let's just do it. I, I'm sick of hearing all these, you know, the naysayers. Well, okay, if if this breaks into a wider regional war, which seems to be heading that way, I have high probability at this point. Um, what? How does that look? Can you play that out at all? What does that mean for the world? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, I don't know. It's just like. When a war begins, it's just like that's the the only thing that's certain is that it's it's going to be it's going to take you places you never imagined. I mean, really, it's true of every every major conflict. It, the parties went into it expecting a certain outcome, and the, it was and quite often, you know, just think of the major conflicts of our time: World War One, World War Two, the Civil War, whatever it was, um, like. People went off to the front saying, be over you know, a matter of days. Be, yeah, like a couple of weeks, a month or whatever. And then four years later, many tens of millions of, of people dead. Yeah, much of Europe in smoking ruins. Who knows? We hope that that's not what's going to happen. I mean, you have to say, like with the Ukraine war, it was that um, Putin had a plan for a very quick war that would be resolved quickly by, you know, uh, a treaty. And he almost got it. I don't think he was, it's clear that he wasn't planning on the war that he has. They had to actually retreat, regroup, um, mobilize, <clears throat> you know, start cranking out their, up their military production. And they, because several months into it, he realized 
that oh you know we've got this is this is not what i was bargaining for we've got a real war on our hands and we just and and yeah so he had to he had to adapt and and now we have the war that we have now but it was not the war that was intended i anyway i'm just saying that once the war starts i have no idea and i don't think anybody does a lot of things is mm. you know one thing is that um yeah you can look back at the war like in 2006 um war in 1982 but technology is evolving so rap rapidly and armies too um you know a, an army that fought well 20 years ago you, you kind of used to assume that it's the same army now but it's a new generation and they may just may not have the same uh fighting spirit or you know or maybe uh, training is in that country or in that particular military as has is not up to the standards that it used to be who knows you often don't find out these things until the war begins even the you know the nobody war is the great kind of tester you know it puts everything to the test right and we'll we'll find out what these armies are made of i think we've already seen quite a little you know uh have a good idea of what the idf is made of and it hasn't been very impressive so far but it, but again they haven't really been put to the test because they have been fighting a war against civilians and it's just a ragtag guerrilla army with very few weapons to be honest and and that hasn't been very and they're still losing. But now they're going to be going up against hezbollah and hezbollah has a fearsome reputation and i i think it's it's um you know it's it, that that reputation is based on reality but we'll find out and we'll find out if we have a real war the, I, I think this war will be very different than anything we've seen before because Israel will escalate immediately. They have shown that they have no restraint, that they will be preemptive, that they are comfortable with leveling population centers. They are, they have effectively, they're very good at dehumanizing their opponent. They have no qualms killing women, children, uh, you know, UN workers. Uh, doctors, whatever, you know, they, they may go, they may go nuclear sooner rather than later because they feel like we got to win yeah. quick yeah. without any regard yeah. with, you know, like they said, there's no rationality left in the, this country, no regard about what the rest of the world thinks about them. They, they are the eternal victim, like you said. So we just got to do what we got to do. And there's this apocalyptic element in there as well, thinking that we are God's chosen people. And that gives us the right to you know, rape prisoners, which apparently is something that's debated now in Israeli society, um, and to bomb you to to shoot children, sniper shooting toddlers. Like this is what this is the society that we. This is what you're up against. Is that right. is this type of is this society? This is Israel, right? right. Um, and that has no too, bombs, it's... bombing embassies, assassinating, right. uh, you know, political leaders. Right, we can go on forever about right, this. So right. also I think it'll go, it'll escalate it, right, rapidly. It, right, the the president of this country that you just described recently came to the United States and spoke before its Congress, and got fifty eight standing ovations. I mean, that is just a very shameful chapter in the history of the United States. I mean, this this is a real stain. This is a a. a you know, th these are dark days. I'll just put it this way. I mean, yeah, it fact, is. That, it's that, disgusting. Happen, that that tells you, I mean, that we are in real <laughs> trouble ourselves, that if we cannot, you know, not only mm. it's bad enough if we didn't, you know, if we just turned away, but we've actually actually turned towards this horrible genocide and we're applauding. And and so shame on I us. Know. I mean, what a horror. Yeah. And then supporting. Right. This is actually one of the things that kept me up at night uh as what i was thinking like oh my god this war might break out and then i was just thinking like when this does happen when iran does strike out i know my friends here in tennessee that are they're this I, i'm in the land of christian zionism i know they're yeah. all going to be behind israel and it's just like that it makes me sick and yeah it's hard no, no, it to, does it turns it, my stomach too and i'm hard I to talk about this are, and debate right it. i yeah it's it's awful now you know, a lot of those people, you know, that they're decent people in so many ways, but they've, they're, they're, 
they've been lied to right. and they've, they've They're subscribed my to this horrible, <laughs> yeah, they subscribe to this horrible lie. And it's so, yeah, it's painful to see. Um, um, yeah, but I, that's where we are again. These are, yeah, I, it's so hard to break through and that's why I guess this podcast is good that maybe slowly we can educate people one, but when I try to talk to some people in person about it, it gets so emotional so quickly that it just, yeah. you're not going to make any progress. It's that they're not open to really changing their mind about these things. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. I think, I really think we're, this is it. We're coming to the end where I think yeah. we're coming to the yeah. beginning of the end. I should say, yeah, yeah. I think Israel, right. this could go Israel has years, the only but... path for Israel yeah. is his destruction. Israel yeah. no, is going to be gone, true. I think. Right. I don't know if this will be, maybe we'll see some kind of replay of what we saw in April, but it just seems to me that the um, the stars are aligned. I, you know, it's not just that, a, okay, once again, Israel has, has deliberately uh, provoked Iran, has actually driven them into, into a corner where they're forced to fight, right? They've done that. Um, but also, okay, last time, Maybe there was enough resistance within the U.S. that that uh, Netanyahu felt that okay, he had to pull back. It wasn't the time. The U.S. just w wasn't ready to get become involved. But now, with the um, with Biden's condition, his withdrawal from the race, you know, uh, Trump's. Uh, I don't know if it's a likely victory, but I think probably our odds are in favor of him. It it just changes everything. I think that Netanyahu is looking at this and saying, "This is my time," and you know that, and th there's just no way that there there really isn't anything there in the U.S. that can stop me from from pulling this off. I think he's probably going to go for right. it, and that he probably will. There's a good chance. I can't say you know it's certain, but there's a very good chance he will pull it off, and he will draw the U.S. into this conflict this time. Right. I mean, that address to the U.S. Congress was basically his confirmation, I feel like, getting yeah, those 58 I think it was, standing ovations. He was laying the groundwork and, for what he intended to do. Yeah. Right. And, and re realizing as well that, hey, there's nobody in charge in the United States. There's a bit of a power vacuum because Biden is you know, no longer there mentally. He's dropped out of the race. Who, who's, who's, who's in charge? He's like, I'm in charge. Netanyahu's in charge now. He came to our Congress and showed us that he's the one that's running, calling the shots now. Right. And it's gross. It's disgusting. And we, everybody, they all stood up and clapped for this genocidal maniac that's going to drag us into war and probably cause untold destruction and death across the world, across the Middle East. Who knows how far this thing could go? You know, we, there could be tens of millions dead later, and we were applauding this yeah, guy that's going to start yeah, we this don't, whole We thing. have no idea. But it's it, crazy. But it is, yeah. It's um, right. It's a very, I'll say, very. I'll end on one thing. One, one positive note. I think that maybe the one thing that could make this this war shorter is that the United States is so weak militarily that it won't be able to sustain a long war. That we'll just try to turn on the engine and it'll sputter. We'll send out a few sparks the first couple of months and be like, "Oops, we ran out of everything." We don't have yeah. anything right. to our, our combat this. Our stockpiles are depleted. Yeah, there was recently a, a study that came out about what might happen if there was a conflict over Taiwan. And basically, what the U.S. would run out of the missiles that they needed within a couple of weeks. Um, and I think it's probably the, mm -hmm. you know, if, if they've got to think about these other theaters too, right? They still have these commitments to Ukraine and to China. And then, yeah, maybe they only have a couple weeks worth of of uh of missiles and so forth for mm -hmm. for the middle east yeah the the hubris of the united states that's another thing that i always get comments on people are like oh man the u.s is just going to kick everyone's butt we're so much better than everybody and they, they just they're so naive they have no idea the current state of our military and you, you, the same i mean our president you know biden was the same thing when he was on that interview talking about like can the u.s fight multi you know these multiple, multiple wars, wars yeah. all these fronts it's like right he's like come on man we're the usa we can do right. what kind of response is that yeah. what kind of response and you right. should be as a, a 
a reasonable person would be like, well, we want peace, right? We'll, right. We're going to work. We could, our military is, is to be uh, an instrument of peace. You know, we, 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 are, we, we don't want to engage in all these wars. We want to engage in diplomacy and end these uh, with as little bloodshed as possible. Instead of this bravado uh, right. that, that it's, it's like acting like my, it's like my, my two-year-old son coming and saying he wants to fight. That's how he is <laughs> acting. Like, ah, and he thinks he can. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's crazy. And we're going to find yeah. out that, that we, yeah, well, there's we, no, we, yeah, aren't, no, we aren't the top right, dog. Right. No awareness of limits. There, there, there are limits, very real limits to our power. And, you know, we may experience them very soon. Mm. Okay, Dad. Well, I'll let you okay. go because I know you just you just arrived in Moscow. You got to, you got the the women in your our family waiting on you. So, um, but we can maybe do another podcast over the weekend if there's some if things pop off. Um, yeah. And yeah, also, I did want to talk to you about Maduro and Venezuela a bit. I mean, we can maybe do that okay. some other time. Sure. Although that might be on the back burner with what's happening now. Yeah. We'll it, see it what just, happens. Right. We might see the whole world. Yeah, burst into flames. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'll let you go. Have a great time. Uh, enjoy All your right. dinner. Enjoy Moscow. And yeah, you're in Russia. We should talk about Ukraine, Russia at some yeah. point in time. So okay. we'll do that too. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.